Hey guys, Sean here and welcome to the F1 Word. Now, despite a strong start to the season in terms of pace and form, 2018 turned out to be a very difficult year for Valtteri Bottas, which saw him end the year fifth in the driver's standings and a whopping 161 points off teammate Lewis Hamilton. So, is the Finn already under pressure for 2019 before the season has even got underway? Well, frankly, yes. Look, we can't ignore the bad luck he suffered at the start of 2018. Of course we can't. How different could this year have been without that safety car in China, the puncture in Baku, Sebastian Vettel hitting him in France, or even his mechanical issues in Austria? We also can't just brush aside his apparent wingman status and what that must do to a driver's confidence. Imagine rocking up at a race weekend, giving it everything you've got, leading a race solidly, and then being told to hop out of the way for your teammate. You're not exactly going to enjoy that. But are they really excuses? Yes, he had a rough time of it for those reasons stated. But what about those weekends where there was no bad luck and there were no team orders? Those weekends where he turned up and was just well off the pace. And let's be quite honest about this. It's not as if team orders were issued at every single Grand Prix. Germany was a smart call from the team and I genuinely believe that they would have pulled rank whichever of their drivers was leading. They'd already seen Vettel in the wall, cars off all over the place and in the mixed conditions were just trying to protect their result. Hungary and Italy, Bottas was nowhere near his teammate in terms of pace and so why not use him to help your other driver out? And Russia, he wasn't even a title contender and so Mercedes did what any team would have done in that situation. Yeah, okay, again, we can talk about his confidence, but as we've discussed on live streams in the past, surely that frustration could have been channeled in another way. You know, show the team they are wrong to see you as a number two, turn up and deliver your pace every weekend, force them into a difficult position instead of just rolling over and accepting it. When it comes to 2019, though, he is under massive pressure already. There is no doubt about that. Not only does he have to bounce back from a poor season last time out, he also only has a one-year deal with an option for a second-year extension, Esteban Ocon is sat behind the scenes breathing down his neck, and another Mercedes young driver is looking to make an impression this year, and that, of course, is George Russell. So there are options for the Silver Arrows, and if Bottas doesn't step up, he will be gone. In fact, there are people out there who believe the decision has already been taken for 2020. Toto Wolff was not afraid to voice his anger at the fact that teams had backed out of signing Ocon for 2019 and pretty much right away was stating that Esteban was guaranteed a seat at a good team in 2020 and that this sabbatical he was taking would be for just one year. It does all sound rather ominous for Bottas when you put it like that. Unless, of course, there is already an agreement in place with another team, which I just can't see happening now. If a team wanted Ocon, they would have taken him for this season, not waited a year. For me, I don't think a decision has been taken just yet. Perhaps I'm wrong, but I would say that Toto would want to see how Valtteri bounces back before making that call. Look at it this way. What if he challenges for the title and then gets dropped? It would be very harsh. I mean, it does happen. No ask Damon Hill. By the way, I do want to add, had all of this with Ocon kicked off before Bottas signed that extension in June, I 100% believe Mercedes would have held off until the end of the season and then made a call, probably dropping Bottas. That's just a personal feeling that I had. So, what has Bottas got to do this coming season then? Well, according to Toto Wolff, he needs to be matching Lewis Hamilton and surely that is the absolute minimum. For me, he has to challenge. It's as simple as that. I agree with Toto. He must be as close as possible to his teammate in terms of pace, but he also has to deliver consistency and quite frankly, I think he needs to be in the title hunt. He doesn't necessarily have to win it, but he needs to be in contention and show the Silver Arrows that he can compete at the top level and that he is worth signing up for another year. And don't forget, Ocon is the team's reserve driver, so if he is the one most likely to replace Bottas, Mercedes have got plenty of time. They can wait until the end of the season before making any decision. Basically, Valtteri has got to be on it from lights out in Australia to the chequered flag falling in Abu Dhabi, and he cannot afford any mistakes or off weekends. The fight at the front and throughout the grid is only going to get closer as we run to 2021. And with Ferrari and Red Bull potentially taking more wins and more points away, Mercedes need to know that they have a strong lineup capable of fighting and indeed taking the fight to their challengers. Bottas is a very good driver. Never forget that. He showed that at Williams during his first season with Mercedes and at the start of 2018. But is he the man to deliver what the Silver Arrows need? Well, he has one more season to prove to them that he is the man for the job, but as harsh as some may think this is, I just don't think he's good enough, or perhaps it's fairer to say quick enough, for Mercedes. That is it for this video then, and in the comments section down below, let me know your thoughts on Valtteri Bottas. Do you agree that he is already under pressure? What does he have to do to keep his seat? And if it was your call, who would you replace him with for 2020? Now, I will be back soon with more content as ever, but in the meantime, you can follow me over on social media. Links to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and of course to Discord are all in the description down below.
But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word. And until next time, goodbye.